Brexit is an opportunity. That's something we seem to hear every day. Now, I'm no Brexiteer, but as we leave the EU, we do have the chance to decide what kind of country we want to build. And I believe tackling inequality and embracing diversity should be at the heart of that. The lack of diversity in this country is a major problem. Firstly, it means we are wasting so much talent. Of the 1.4 million people with learning disabilities in this country, only 6% are employed. And only 4% of doctors and 6% of barristers come from working class backgrounds. It's a terrible waste. But there's also the issue of race. Pay disparity is even worse than you could imagine. New research that I commissioned from the LSE shows that women and men from ethnic minority groups would have incomes totaling an extra £127 billion a year, or £9,300 per person, if their incomes match those of white British men. It's time for the government to act. In the same way we had targets for immigration, let's have them for increasing diversity. And if that means quotas, so be it. We need this more now than ever. Because in order for post-Brexit Britain to thrive, we must diversify. You see, I agree with you on targets and all sorts of things. I don't agree with you on quotas. Okay. I think quotas uh, actually will probably do more damage than good. And of course, at the moment, Why? as you know, they're illegal. Yes, I know. I mean, you can only, the only areas yeah. you can have quotas are in training, mm -hmm. where you, if you can say, well, look, we're short of certain groups in, yeah. in this area, we can, we can discriminate in favour of them mm -hmm. in terms of giving them training. Yeah. Other than that, they're illegal. I think, as a society, taking a decision to say we, we do, we're going to have quotas mm -hmm. regardless of talent actually will be quite damaging. Now, I agree with you in the sense that I don't accept there aren't talented people in all areas who could do some of these jobs. Who are being that's ignored. Why I, yeah, that's why I think targets are a good idea and I think constantly monitoring the targets is a good idea. I wouldn't go as far as quotas. Okay. I object to your language, though, Greg. <laughs> Look, you said quotas regardless of talent. It's kind of this idea that's like a zero-sum game exactly. between increasing diversity and merit. And you hear that a lot, that, mm. oh, we should be a meritocracy and, you know, we shouldn't give the less able person the job. And the problem Can is... Can I just add to that? Yeah. Also, the assumption is that the person from the minority yeah. is less able. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's 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 not, not, not you. I know, Greg, no one would ever accuse it, you of that. Didn't say but I'm, no it, one would accuse you of that. It's not saying they're less able, it's saying... Look, in, if you have targets, you can make the people who, the management, the people who are working for you, you can say, right, go on, why isn't this happening? Let's see, you can do this and do that. The moment you say to quotas, you change the relationship and you say you can only apply it black people or you can only employ some, a woman or you can only employ... It's much harder. I to, agree. It's much harder to convince everybody else that it's a good thing to do. Whereas targets are a good thing to yeah, do. Yeah, totally. I agree with you that it's much harder. But sometimes the system needs a proper shock. And, and sometimes we need legislation and we need to act on it. Exactly. Instead of talking about it. The Equality Sorry. Act says no discrimination Which on, is on, not on fit race, for purpose, gender, whatever. Carol. You mess with the fundamental principle of that and you cause resentment and, and eventually racism. And, and who, you know, I, I was thinking about this yesterday because I knew what, what your arm was going to be. Who would want to be that person in the room who was given the job as the quota? Who would want to be that person who, who got the job because of the colour of their skin? And no, hang on, let me finish. Got the job from the even if they're fantastic at what they do, they will never shake that off. And I think there's a certain shame in that for them to be given to be given a job not on merit instead of the colour of their skin. I just, I just, I wouldn't I want can, to be. In I that can world. actually tell you from first-hand experience what it's like to be that person because every job I've had, people have assumed I'm there as some kind I of positive action. I don't believe action. that for a second. I well, have you're been a told very clever woman. But I people don't believe. Don't that. look at that. They look at you. They assume you're there through some kind of positive mm. action scheme. Don't How did you? get the job was it a diversity scheme and it's the assumption people make even has, though has it's illegal said that to, to you I every I single place I have worked well, I am not I exaggerating can, can, even though it would be illegal to do that people perceive that if you're there you somehow got a leg up because you're black. Can, do you there's, think, no such, there's no such thing as positive discrimination there's only discrimination and that's not what you're after or about. No, but what I'm saying is we have to decide the kind of society that we want to create. And sometimes that does take drastic action. So an example would be in America, uh, when they integrated schools, you know, Brown versus the Board of Education, 75% of Americans were against that. The majority of American people thought it was the wrong thing to do. 
we now know is the right thing to do. And if you're talking about affirmative action, Hillary Clinton is a beneficiary of affirmative action. You know, she was part of the first wave of women that were allowed into Yale. So, so what I'm saying is when the system is that unfair, okay, we're not going to have quotas, then we need to make sure that we have something that we are really serious about because we've been talking about this stuff for a very long time and one, nothing's changed. Well, for a very long time because possibly one of the most inflammatory remarks goes back to 2001, Greg, when you were Director General of the BBC <laughs> and you said the organisation was hideously yeah. white. Yeah. What happened as a result of that? Well, two things happened. One... It was good because the staff knew I was serious about mm. it, which they wouldn't have done otherwise. And secondly, we, we, we did put in place uh, a system of targets and in some ways a sort of kangaroo court. Were you successful? We'd have, Were you successful? Yeah, we, you we, put we, in a kangaroo court? Well, I called it a kangaroo court. But it's, <laughs> we put in a court that basically said every... every all, good, all, all good news then. <laughs> every six months, you're going to come in here and explain why your, the racial figures in your department, haven't, the black and white figures, haven't changed. Did you get a breakthrough? Yes, we changed. As, as you they, they, because yeah. we, we did get a breakthrough. We did get a change. We Still did, a long way to go, we did, as we, we know. Did get because we're the industry that loves to lecture people about it, supporting, and that we can look to ourselves in many yeah, occasions, definitely. can we Completely. not? Completely. But is it, is it not just about okay. colour? Is it not just about class as well? So of course, people for are me, up their personal totally, circumstances. T- totally, which is why my intro spoke about class and social mobility. Mm-hmm. For me, diversity is across but, the board. You know what you were saying before about how white men... Theresa May's report last week, the racism report, what, what came out of that? Was working that white class working, women. No, white working class <laughs> boys yeah. were going to less, 10, 10% less likely to go I to really university. I really want to explore this with Greg. So I'm running oh. the news division oh, oh, for yes, you, yes, and yeah. I'm in f- for you, and you say, Nick, come on. Still, and I said, boss, there just aren't any good non-white faces oh, out there. Oh, come no, on. Hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah, we yeah, can't find any. Classic. I've looked everywhere. I've looked everywhere, you know, but, not, and they're not good not, enough. You know, that's not what happened. <laughs> so tell me, take me through what happened. Well, what so, happened? Nick, the numbers aren't good enough. Where, where, the numbers, where, well, I mean, I can, we've talked about this before. I, can, I mean, I can take you to certain parts of Britain, which was clearly... Uh, large ethnic minorities, uh, groups in that city, and where there were nobody working yeah, yeah. for the BBC. Okay, okay. You then say, look, uh, that's got to change. And Greg, can I add to your point, and I, I think your point is completely valid, there's a difference between discriminating against somebody who is clearly able and fit for the job oh, no, to being yeah. inclusive and then bringing in a whole new talent pool and creating a new pipeline, which is what we need to do. Now, not plugging, but um, my ah, new book, Diversify, deals with this issue. And some of the research that we conducted for it from the LSE, I'll tell you the income levels, clearly, even even you, Nick, have to say this isn't right. Well, so, not. well... Look, <laughs> rather dark no, no, really. no, never. No, you know, I'll there's the nothing hit. but Go love on. for you, I'll sweetheart. Hit, OK, so, uh, average annual income for white men, £35,200. Yep. Uh, for uh, black African women, uh, £26,000. Uh, Carol, you're going to love this. Uh, okay. For white women, £24,200. Wow. And uh, wow. this is based on a study by the Family uh, Resources Survey. I'm totally wrong. Just so that, as mm. you, you know, you rather mm. had me the hospital pass. That, that mm. cannot, that yes, cannot that, be allowed yeah. to continue. Absolutely yeah. Yeah. No, but you so then what do we do about it? Because you, first of all, you need to understand why. Yeah, yes. Because if you don't yeah. understand why, you're not going to change it. Yes, and we do understand why. And if you why. understand why, then you start saying, OK, are there solutions because we know why this is totally. happening? Totally. And then for, with these figures, there are uh, multiple reasons Which is why, why stats are only of any use. When you understand why. If you understand why and you're yeah. prepared to take some policy decisions so to change. Even a, so even an example would be even uh, the, dis- the disparity between uh, black African women and, and white women on this is pure, uh, purely because actually more black African women work full time. Yeah. So that's why there's and, that and, difference and another in stat that came out this week that I hadn't heard of was that, that self-employed women in this country earn about 17 and a half grand self-employed men yes. in 25 and a half yes. grand why is that yeah okay look-